Welcome back to AWF Outdoors. On this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about how I learned to crappie fish. I hope you stay to the end of this video. There's going to be a lot of tips that I learned from a very early age about crappie fishing. And I'll be sharing a lot more tips with you in the next videos throughout this season and throughout this year. But um, again, welcome to AWF Outdoors, and while we're at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, if you're interested in learning more about crappie fishing, and I'm, I'm going to try to share uh, what I would say would be at least 55, 56 years of crappie fishing. So if you're interested in that, that, uh, that topic, uh, you know, just so thankful that you're here, so maybe I can help you learn crop fishing. But I had a subscriber that asked me, I had a bunch of you guys ask me actually to tie some more jigs. Uh, I'm running out of ideas on jig colors. So I asked one of you guys that wanted, a, wanted another jig video, what color would you want? I have never personally fished with an electric chicken and I've never tied an electric chicken jig. So what I did, I got on Google and pulled up the colors of what electric chicken looks like. I uh, looked through my material here and uh, picked out some colors that I thought would, would make that electric chicken look really good. And uh, so that's what I've done. So the first part of this video is going to be learning to tie the electric chicken. This is my version of electric chicken because after Googling it, I can see that there is literally hundreds of different color variations in electric chicken. So this is what material I had and how I chose to tie it. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's a very, very good looking jig. So uh, I'm probably gonna take these jigs and go fish with them. I mean, they look that good. After the part of tying this jig, uh, I discuss how I got into crappie fishing at a very early age. Uh, this is over 50 years ago. And the techniques that, that I learned at that time. And we've come a very, very long way from, from where I started. Uh, you know, I started with the basic materials of a cane pole, a real cane pole, a uh, piece of split shot lead, uh, probably a one alt Aberdeen hook, or gold hook. Uh, my dad fishing for crappie, you know, back in those days. Uh, I remember he used 30 pound test line. So the 30 pound test is so when you got hung up, you could pull this hook back out. Uh, would be the only reason I say using a 30 pound test line, but that's what we used when we when we was learning to crappie fish, and this was passed down from generation to generation. So basically, fishing this technique was taught and learned, uh, you know, probably a hundred years ago. So whenever they come out with, with a, at least monofilament, I'm sure they had other braids and things even before then of some type of fishing line. But uh, I learned to fish with a cane pole, 30 pound test line, a piece of split shot, a one alt or, or two alt Aberdeen hook, a minnow, and we fish treetops. So, uh, just imagine where crappie world is went to now. I remember when the first telescopic poles came out. Uh, actually, I still have some of my dad's right here. I'll grab one of them. Now, this may not be the first first brand that came out, but uh, this is this actually is a B and M. This is one of my dad's poles. I've got three of them over here, and uh, may have more than that. But check this out. This is a black widow B and M. And when they first come out, they didn't even have these little brass pieces that you could wrap your line and stuff on. When they first come out, you'd have to go around, around, around. And uh, but this is a, a telescopic. This is a 13-foot B&M BW4RR. Um, so that's, that's what we, you know, move from a cane pole and come to this. You know, some of you guys probably never even saw a telescopic pole, but... Uh, basically, which this one's rolled up, but it's got a tip on it up here. You tied your line back when we was using cane poles. We tied the line actually about halfway down the pole, 
And the purpose of that was this cane was very limber out here at the end because you know you have to have a limber tip to, to be able to handle this crappie. But uh, since that cane pole was limber, you know, you tie your line halfway down the pole, wrap it up, wrap it all the way to the end, and then put a little knot up here at the tip of the, the actual cane. I might make a video on that one day and just go crappie fishing with a real cane pole. So that way, if you broke your tip on that cane, you never lost your fish or your rigging. You know, you could just back back down and tie the line wherever it broke off at, but your line was actually tied by halfway down the pole. So that, that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, man, this was top of the line when this come out. I mean, just like some of your nicest, most expensive rods that you buy now. Uh, you know, now you can buy a reel and a rod and pay 150 bucks for it. Can you imagine what those people would have thought? Uh, or thought, like my dad, what would, he, what would he have thought if it cost you $150 for a crappie pole? Uh, you know, back then, you know, some people didn't even make $150 in a week. So, yeah, that's what we've came to now. And now we're actually uh, catching crappie like we're playing a video game. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's really advanced, really advanced. So, let me stick this back over here. So, anyway, stick around to the end of the video. It's going to be some interesting tips on uh, uh, how I learned to, to crop your fish. And, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's just an ongoing process. Uh, my dad's been, been passed away now for, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a person that keeps up with dates, but, uh, you know, it's been 20 years ago. Uh, but just in the last 20 years, uh, I'm sure he wouldn't be able to believe how we, you know, what we came to in crop fishing. So uh, glad you glad you joined in again. Stick around for the whole video, and uh, let's get to tying this electric chicken. And then after we do this electric chicken, we're gonna get into the old days and what it was like fishing for crappie with a cane pole. So stick around. Thank you again. All right. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little clear fingernail polish. Just something to. Bond the thread to the hook so we don't have any slipping. I'm going to use a chartreuse thread. I usually go forward one, one route and don't have to be tight. I mean, as far as the loops hitting each other, we're just giving it a back end to keep anything from slipping. So I'm going to go back now about three fourths of the way because I'm going to put a tail on this. Trim off the excess. I'm going to tie uh, the first electric chicken that I've ever done. And uh, I've always loved a chartreuse tail. It's, it's just the same chartreuse tails work good. So I'm going to add a little bit of chartreuse in, in it for a tail. This is just my version of electric chicken. I'm sure there's probably a hundred different versions. So I'm gonna look and see where, how long I wanna make that little tad of chartreuse. Now when this gets wet, this is gonna be like a slither. All these feathers will be sticking together. I'm using a chartreuse marabou. And this is the ends. It's, some marabou's real fuzzy, but this one right here is kind of stringy. So it'll work good for a tail. So I'm gonna measure it out on, on about an inch and a half to inch and three quarter jig. Cut that off. And since I made it that long, I'm gonna bring my thread back to the front. Lay my tail material right there. I'm not really worried about right now as I go back where this tail is, but as I go back, I wanna make sure that tail is lined up and laying back there straight with the, with the hook shank. So see it's coming back there right where it needs to be. Go back forward. All right. Now we're going to use some uh, use some yellow marabou. This table I'm working on is granite, and it's a uh, dark granite, and you can't hardly see the 
the jig gets blurry when you're looking at a black background. So I got this white cloth laying here. Hopefully you can see a little bit better. But what I like to do, you can see how rough this looks on Marabou. What I like to do is taking a, a toothbrush. I just lay that Marabou out and just comb it out. That gets all your pieces that are stuck together and stuff out to where it is really fluffy then. You can see how fluffy that is. And that'll act the same way in the water. So that's the purpose of using marabou. I mean, it just flows, you can see in the air. So we're gonna get us a chunk of this marabou here. I can cut off extra right now. Get it to where I can handle it. Then I'll take all this stuff and put it in. I want that chartreuse back here sticking out of the yellow just a little bit. So I'm going to use about that much yellow. Probably about right there. I'll probably end up having to add some more of the yellow marabou to it just to fill it in a little bit better. I'll start lightly wrapping and look at it. Kind of pinch your marabou down to where it'll go around the jig a little bit. That gives it some material on the top part of the jig too. After I get to that point right there, just to see where I need to fill in, I'll always take it off and turn it over, but you can see, you can still see your hook there, so we need a little bit more of the marabou on that side. So I'm gonna get a little more of it. Now I'll check my length again. See where I need to cut that at. That looks about right. So I'm gonna take a little bit more off. I always like checking it up to the head and making sure you stay in the same length. Okay, we're gonna wrap. Oh, that still looks a little ragged right there. We're gonna wrap this in, but this time I'm gonna let that marabou roll around the hook a little bit. You see how it rolled around right there? I want it to roll around, fill in that void that was on the other side. All right, before I get too far, I wanna look at that again. Look at my jig all the way around. Make sure I got the marabou good. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more to help make a little a little bit better body because like I said, when this stuff gets wet, it goes into a line, you know, just like a string. So I'm gonna pick out just a little bit more here, add just a touch more to it. Go back there about a quarter of an inch and back forward. Okay, now I can look at my look at my body and see how much material we got on it. And that looks pretty good. You can just faintly see that chartreuse right there in the center. That looks pretty good to me. Like I said, I've never tied an electric chicken. But, uh, one of my subscribers asked me to do that, and I run out of ideas. So uh, we're doing electric chicken. All right, uh, since it is electric, what do you say we add a little bit of this flash of blue in there too? Make it look electric. So we're gonna add a couple pieces of that to each side. Wrap that to where Okay, that's on this side. I'm gonna wrap us another piece on the other side. Now we got it. Now you can see a flash of blue in there. 
I'm going to use a kind of a fuzzy, I guess you would call this a medium to large Chanel. And just my opinion, since it is an electric chicken, let's go with some flash. We're going to use that for a body material up front. Go back one time and back forward. And we're going to wrap it around that. Well, I'll tell you what, I messed up. Let's back up one step here. Nothing wrong with backing up if you can catch yourself in time. So let's back up one time. I forgot one step here. I did tie one jig before I started this video just to get an idea of what, what I wanted to do here. All right, so let's get this out of the way. All right, let's back up to this step. What I want to do here is turn my jig up to the other side. This is a cheap vise, and uh, it don't spin easily. So, but what I'm going to do, since this is electric chicken, I've got rabbit fur here. It's the only thing I've got in paint material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull me a, pull me a little bit of this rabbit fur off. Just need a little piece. Just works as an accent. And you're gonna see this jig pop right here with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this little bit of pink up to the top side of this jig. It'll be the top side as it's being pulled through the water or whatever you're jigging through the water. All right. Some of this natural hair and stuff likes to slip a little bit. So I always put a dab on my thread there when I'm using natural hair so it won't slip. All right, now we can go back to our, our Chanel. All right, let's start back again. Let's put some electric in this chicken. All right. Don't y'all agree that that, uh, that little pink right there is what set that off? like this fuzzy body here too. We found something now. This is a little better one here, I think. He likes fighting. Yeah, come here, bear. That's a pretty good one. You don't need him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good jig fall out of there. I'll uh, go back and trim that body just a little bit whenever I get through here. Get all the loose ends off of it. Okay. Now we're going to do a little whip finish. That was four. One, two, three. Go back and let's just trim some of these loose ends here on this chenille. Just make it look a little more uniform. All So what y'all think about that version of electric chicken? Man, this video ended up being so long, uh, 
it's already over 20 minutes and um, it was just a lot of information I want to share with you guys especially some stories about you know how I got into crappie fishing and what it was like you know 50 years ago uh, even sooner than that you know t even 20 years ago what it was like to uh, go crappie fishing and and I actually do good crappie fishing. I mean, that's that's what got me hooked on it. You know, if I didn't do good, I wouldn't be here doing it today. So, uh, but but I'll just uh, and like I said, this video is so long. Uh, I'm gonna break this down and put it in a part two. And part two is gonna be on the history of crappie fishing 50 years ago. And uh, there's gonna be some more and very important tips in that that uh, you don't want to miss. I mean, there's going to be some tips in this that I think every fisherman needs to hear. And, and if you're not a fisherman, uh, you still need to hear it. So there's some very important lessons coming up in the part two. And um, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell over on the side so you do not miss this next video because it's going to be probably one of the most important videos about how to become successful as a crappie fisherman and as a person in general. So uh, please hit the subscribe button and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video. So see you next time.